Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Now you're probably wondering why you are looking at some lump wood charcoal. Well, I'm going to explain that. Now, it is going to be used in some upcoming tests. Now, when I was in Sochi, I suggested to the Russian researchers that they added carbon to their uh, experiment. And there's good reason for this. Uh, in 2017, we saw carbon used in a lot of systems that apparently were transmuting elements. One of them was the echo fuel processing, the lion reactor in the form of diamonds, uh, Mi-356 in uh, one of his uh, experiments, the um, Nova reactor, obviously, and uh, there was also, in a number of those, uh, another element, but uh, carbon was the one that I wanted to focus on. And in Sochi, I said in part that the reason I was suggesting that was because uh, a large portion of carbon is carbon-12, and that is bosonic in nature, and I believe that is important to the process that we are witnessing. Anyway, so uh, one test that I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into this supernova reactor, and... Uh, Essentially, we've had this for quite some time, and given that the maker of this supernova reactor and uh, the nova reactor that we had uh, died uh, very uh, unfortunately of uh, uh, liver cancer and cancers in his body, um, and the fact that we had limited glass, I didn't want to just continue to repeat the tests. Uh, that we'd done before without really understanding the process and I think I have a fairly good handle on it uh, and in part that came because of all of the stuff that we did in 2017 with the crowd's support. So uh, before I hand this back to the owner I want to run these tests uh, and uh, one of them is going to be with carbon and I'm going to be more specific about what those are uh, in the coming weeks um, but essentially uh, what I'm looking at is not using coal and not using graphite. Now, why would I be doing that? Well, I, I want to leave this as a little bit of a puzzle, but to help you along the way, I also want to talk about something else that I'm going to be running in these tests. Now, uh, when we had the Nova reactor initially, I thought I wanted to add something into the mix, and that was potassium carbonate. Now, why am I saying potassium carbonate? Well, I can tell you that the Lion reactor, whilst that had only carbon in, potassium carbonate was used by Mi-356. It was a component in the Echo Fuel. It was used in the work of Matsumoto with Nickel, Bokris, and with Mills, with varying results. But the thing that really uh, triggered my thinking was that of alchemy. Now, on the 2nd of May 2018, I published this blog on our Steam It, and it was making gold worthy alchemists right all along. And I used the Parkamov uh, tables, uh, for the nucleon exchange tables, and I worked out with about 50 seconds of effort that the elements that they were proposing to be used uh, in alchemy actually were the ones that were most likely to produce gold. Now, here's the alchemical elements, and this is off the Royal Society of Chemistry website. And there is one here, uh, which it says potassium. And in fact, the interesting part about the potassium here was it, is it was in the form of potash. And so this is where you get essentially something like uh, lump with charcoal. Instead of burning it to charcoal, you burn it to ash and you end up with pot ash which has potassium carbonate in it. And so potassium was basically used liberally in uh, alchemical work. So essentially, uh, potash has pot uh, potassium, carbon, and oxygen in it. So I did these reaction tables here, and I found that uh, potassium was always in the top three, whether you were using the alchemical metal bismuth, lead, or mercury. Uh, it was always in the top three. And actually, um, two things. Prior to going to Sochi, I asked Philip Power to add the bosonic nature of either the atom nucleus or uh, the uh, atom with the electrons to uh, the uh, calculation tables that he did. Part of the reason was um, this particular carbon-12 story. And I'm going to really expand on why I think carbon is important and also potassium carbonate. Um, but essentially, 
Uh, if you take the new tables uh, that were added into uh, Philip Powell's work and you run the electron processes, you'll find that uh, whereas uh, in bismuth uh, calcium comes top uh, uh, in terms of the most energetic ones that produce uh, uh, gold, um, actually, with electron processes, it's potassium. And again, uh, it is potassium, but even higher energy in both cases. Why would potassium be playing such a big role? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell that out uh, in, in due course. Uh, but essentially, uh, I'm also take uh, The reason I'm talking about these now is because I'm not going to just run it in the Nova reactor. Uh, I'm going to be running it in another experiment that I am going to talk about in the coming week and uh, the data that may come from this uh, may give some striking insight into what is going on in the Lena process. So Alan Goldwater has made up some metal cartridges uh, that we're going to be using in this particular experiment uh, and in one we're going to place some potassium carbonate and in the other, we're going to pre pre place some uh, ground up carbon. Now, I'm going to uh, grind this up in a pestle and mortar as I did before for the Nova testing. And um, I'm going to keep some sample off to one side as a control. And uh, some of it will be processed in here, both with potassium carbonate uh, and without potassium carbonate. And also in this up and coming series of tests that you will learn about in the next week. So that's it. Uh, we are going to be using carbon in the form of lumpwood charcoal. And I want you to think about why I would do that. And also potassium carbonate. And I want you to think about why I would do that. Of course, this has got carbon in it as well. Um, but uh, those are the two things. And I want you to go into the literature and just see how many Lena researchers have used potassium carbonate uh, in their experiments. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to sharing more details about these experiments in the coming weeks.